Hi, everyone. Welcome to Pla Academy. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and leave a positive comment. Your support and encouragement motivate me to create more great videos. I divide the topics in Unit 1, Mechanics and Materials as as follows, like this. And all the topics are covered by following the syllabus of the Physics International A Level for Edexcel, as shown here. In this video, I've covered all of Topic 1, Mechanics, focusing on motion and the subtopics of moments. Center of gravity, sometimes, it is also called the center of mass. The center of gravity of the object is the point where the whole of the weight of the object appears to act. The weight of all objects acts through the center of gravity. For example the center of gravity of an apple, a magnet and the person, their weight act downward from these points, like this. The center of gravity doesn't have to be inside the object itself, like as you magnet. The uniform objects have their center of gravity in the middle. For example the uniform meter rule, its center of gravity is 50 cm marks as shown. The uniform cylinder solid, uniform sphere solid and uniform cube solid have the center of gravity at the middle as shown. The object will always balance around its center of gravity. The uniform meter rule can be balanced at 50 cm marks as shown. The people is walking on the rope, as shown. A pencil can be balanced on the finger, as shown. The object will be nice and stable if it has low center of gravity, and wide base area are shown. For example, a conical frustum placed with its wider base on the ground is more stable than when flipped upside down. In the first case, the center of gravity is lower and the base area is wider, so more stability. The second case, the center of gravity is higher and the base area is smaller, so less stability. An object will topple over if a vertical line drawn downward from its center of gravity falls outside its base area, as shown. The turning effect of a force is also known as the moment of a force. It's basically how much a force can make something rotate around a pivot point. Moment of a force is the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the pivot. For example, when you use a wrench to loosen a nut, you apply a force to the end of the wrench. The longer the wrench and the harder you push, the greater the turning effect. If you apply the force at a right angle to the wrench, you get the maximum moment, as shown. But if you apply the force at an angle, like this, the perpendicular distance decreases, so the moment also decreases, as shown. And if you push directly along the wrench, the perpendicular distance is zero, so there's no turning effect at all, as shown. Work example 1. Calculate the moment about the point P. A, A4 Newton's force acts on the rod at a 30 degree angle, creating a moment about point P, which is 5 meters from the point of force application. We resolve the 4 Newton's force into components perpendicular and parallel to the rod, as shown. Perpendicular component is 4 sine, 30 degrees, and parallel component is 4 cos, 30 degrees. The moment of 4 Newton's force about P is 4 sine, 30 degrees, multiplied by 5. We get the moment equals 10 Newton's meter, in anticlockwise direction. B. A 3.6 Newton force acts on the rod at a 140 degree angle, creating a moment about point P, which is 5 meters from the point of force application. We resolve the 3.6 Newton's force into components perpendicular and parallel to the rod, as shown. This angle is 140 minus 90 is equal to 50 degrees. The perpendicular component is 3.6 cos 50 degrees and parallel component is 3.6 sine 50 degrees. The moment of 3.6 Newton's force about P is 3.6 cos 50 degrees multiplied by 5. We get the moment equals 11.6 Newton's meter for three significant figures in clockwise direction. 
Principle of moments. For a body to be in equilibrium, the sum of the moments about any point is zero. Therefore, the total clockwise moment is equal total anticlockwise moment. Conditions for equilibrium. For a body to be in equilibrium, the resultant force on the body must be zero. And the resultant moment, torque, on the body must be zero. Work example 4. A uniform ladder rests against a vertical wall where there is negligible friction. The bottom of the ladder rests on rough ground where there is friction. The top of the ladder is at a height h above the ground and the foot of the ladder is at a distance 2, a, from the wall. The diagram shows the forces that act on the ladder. Which equation is formed by taking moments? The moment about the point. A total clockwise moment equals total anticlockwise moment. The clockwise moment about the point, a, equals w times a plus f times h. The anticlockwise moment about the point, a, equals w times 2a. We simplify the equation as w, a, plus f h equals 2 w, a. The moment about the point, b total clockwise moment equals total anticlockwise moment. The clockwise moment about the point, b, equals f times half of h plus f times half of h. The anticlockwise moment about the point, b, equals w times, a. We simplify the equation, as f h equals w, a. The moment about the point, c total clockwise moment equals total anticlockwise moment. The clockwise moment about the point, c equals f times h. The anticlockwise moment about the point, c equals w times, a. So, a is correct. Work example 5. A uniform rod xy of weight 10 newtons is freely hinged to a wall at x. It is held horizontal by a force f acting from y at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, as shown. What is the value of force f? We take the moment about the point x. Total clockwise moment equals total anticlockwise moment. A 10 newtons force acting at a perpendicular distance of half of xy from the point x creates a clockwise moment. So, the clockwise moment about the point x equals 10 times half of xy. The force f, acting at a perpendicular distance of xy cos, 60 degrees, from the point x, creates an anticlockwise moment. So, the anticlockwise moment about the point x equals f times xy cos, 60 degrees. We solve the force F equals 10 newtons. Work example 6. A horizontal bar is supported on a pivot at its center of gravity. A fixed load is attached to one end of the bar. To keep the bar in equilibrium, a force F is applied at a distance X from the pivot. How does F vary with X? The weight of a fixed load creates the anticlockwise moment about the pivot, which is always constant. The force F, acting at a perpendicular distance X from the pivot creates the clockwise moment, which is F times X. We apply the principle of moments about the pivot, so total anticlockwise moment equals total clockwise moment. So, F times X equals constant. This shows that the force F is inversely proportional to X. This creates the reciprocal graph. So, B is correct. Coplanar forces in equilibrium. Consider a stationary lamp of weight W pulled to one side with a horizontal force F, so that it makes an angle theta with the vertical, as shown in the free body diagram below. To analyze the forces acting on the lamp, we can construct a vector diagram. Draw the weight vector W. Draw the force vector F, connecting the tail of F to the head of W. Draw the tension vector T connecting the tail of T to the head of F. These angles are theta. From the vector diagram of W, F and T is a closed triangle, with all the arrows going the same way round the triangle. This shows that the sum of these three forces is zero, and that the body is in equilibrium. 
Work example 7. The diagram shows an experiment to measure the force exerted on a ball by a horizontal air flow. The ball is suspended by a light string and weight 0.15 newtons. The deflection of the string from vertical is 30 degrees. What is the force on the ball from the air flow? The ball is equilibrium, so the resultant force is zero and the vector diagram is closed triangle. Draw the tension vector T. Draw the weight vector W, connecting the tail of W to the head of T. Draw the force vector F, connecting the tail of F to the head of W. This angle is 30 degrees. And this angle is 90 degrees. We calculate the force F by the tangent ratio. So, tan, 30 degrees, equals F over 0.15. We solve the force F equals 0.087 newtons for two significant figures. Work example 8. The diagram shows a rope bridge that a student makes on an adventure training course. The student has a weight W. What is the tension T in the rope in term of W and theta? The weight W of the student acts downward. The tension T in the string is same due to same string. The tension T in right hand side is draw, like this. We resolve the tension T into the vertical and horizontal components, like this. The vertical component is T sine, theta, and horizontal component is T cos, theta. The tension T in left hand side is draw, like this. We resolve the tension T into the vertical and horizontal components, like this. The vertical component is T sine, theta, and horizontal component is T cos, theta. A student is equilibrium, so the resultant force is zero. This causes the total downward force equals total upward force. So, W equals T sine, theta, plus T sine, theta. We get W equals 2T sine, theta. Work example 9. A sledge slides down a slope at a constant velocity. The three forces that act on the sledge are the normal contact force C, the weight W, and a constant frictional force F. Which diagram represents these forces acting on the sledge? A sledge slides down a slope at a constant velocity, this means that it is equilibrium. So, the vector diagram of W, C and F is closed triangles and their arrows going the same way round the triangle. Choice A is incorrect because the arrows do not point in the same direction around the triangle. Choice B is incorrect because the arrows do not point in the same direction around the triangle. Choice C is correct because the arrows point in the same direction around the triangle. Choice D is incorrect because the arrows do not point in the same direction around the triangle. Exam style question 1. Two brackets, A and B, support a shelf of length 1.2 meters. Bracket A is positioned 0.15 meters from the left-hand end of the shelf. A book is placed 0.35 meters from the left-hand end of the shelf as shown. A. The normal contact forces of each bracket on the shelf are equal. We give these forces to be R acting upward at A and B, like this. Determine the distance of bracket B from the left-hand end of the shelf. We give this distance to be X, like this. Weight of book equals 8.5 newtons. Weight of shelf equals 14 newtons. This weight act at the middle of the shelf, which is 0.6 meters from left end. For a shelf is equilibrium, indicating the resultant force is zero. So, the total upward force is equal to the total downward force. So, we get the force R plus R equals 8.5 newtons plus 14 newtons. We solve the normal force R as 11.25 newtons. For a shelf is equilibrium, indicating the resultant moment is also zero. So, the total clockwise moment equals total anticlockwise moment about at point B. We get the force R at A creates clockwise moment and far from B is X minus 0.15 meters. 
The force of 8.5 newtons create the anticlockwise moment and far from B is x minus 0.35 meters. The force of 14 newtons create the anticlockwise moment and far from B is x minus 0.6 meters. So, 11.25 times x minus 0.15 equals 8.5 times x minus 0.35 plus 14 times x minus 0.6. We solve the distance as 0.86 meters for two significant figures. You get five marks from. Use of the resultant force equals zero. The normal force R equals 11.25 newtons. Use the moment equals force times perpendicular distance from the suitable pivot. Use the principle of moments. Correct distance as 0.86 meters. B, bracket B is moved closer to the left-hand end of the shelf. Explain the effect on the magnitude of the normal contact force of bracket B on the shelf. The moment of the bracket B must be the same for making the shelf to be equilibrium. For a smaller distance from the left end of the shelf, causing the normal contact force at B must be increased. You get two marks from. The moment at B must be the same. For smaller distance of B from the left end, causing the normal force at B to increase. Exam style question 2. A uniform, horizontal flagpole is connected by a hinge to a wall at position O. An aluminium wire connects the pole to the wall at A, as shown. A, a free body force diagram for the flagpole is shown below. Identify the forces X, Y, and Z. The force X is the tension is the wire. The force Y is the reaction for from the wall or hinge acting on the flagpole. The force Z is the weight of the flagpole. You get three marks from. The force X is correct. The force Y is correct. The force Z is correct. B. The aluminium wire will break if the tension in the wire exceeds 350 newtons. The wire is attached to the flagpole at B. 0.8 meters from the wall. The wire is at an angle of 20 degrees to the flagpole. Assess whether the wire will break. You should use the principle of moments, taking moments about O. Length of flagpole equals 1.2 meters. Mass of flagpole and flag equals 15 kilograms. So, the weight of flagpole act downward at the middle as 0.6 meters from the point O. This weight equals 15 times 9.81. To separate the vertical component of the tension T in the wire as T sine, 20 degrees. This vertical component creates the anticlockwise moment about point O. The weight W creates the clockwise moment about point O. From the principle of moment about point O. The total clockwise moment equals total anticlockwise moment. So, 15 times 9.81 times 0.6 equals T sine, 20 degrees, times 0.8. We solve the tension T as 323 newtons for three significant figures. This tension is less than 350 newtons, so the wire will not break. You get three marks from. Use the equation of moment equals force times perpendicular distance from the pivot. Use the principle of moment. The tension T equals 323 newtons and correct the conclusion. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would be grateful if you would subscribe, share, like and leave a positive comment. Your support will encourage me to create more content. Thank you.